Let's learn in this Lightboard session how CADA works. CADA stands for Kubernetes Event Driven Autoscaling. And even it have the word Kubernetes in it, which means that it works in any Kubernetes cluster like AKS, EKS, GKE, OpenShift, or a non-prem Kubernetes. But CADA works also on Azure Container Apps. CADA was created in order to extend the Kubernetes autoscaling features. So Kubernetes typically uses autoscaling rules based on memory and CPU, but with CADA, we can extend that system to use some external metrics or to use event triggers that could be based on a message queue, for example, like an Azure service bus or Kafka or RabbitMQ. So within CADA, we will have first the trigger of the auto-scaling, which could be either a queuing message. So let's see here, let's say here we would have a queue, for example, a queuing system where we have multiple messages waiting to be received and processed, or could also be triggered based on a metric. So we might have an external uh, metric system like Prometheus, for example, that will save metrics about workloads on our cluster or metrics about other workloads outside the cluster. And then we would have here CADA that will go to connect to these two systems. So let's add CADA here. So if I'm using an AKS cluster, I will need to install CADA as an extension. Or if I'm using now Azure Kuber container apps, then CADA will, will be already there. It's installed out of the box. So CADA will go to connect to those different uh, systems. For that, we'll need to authenticate and we'll come to this later. So it will connect to my queue, for example, that could be something like Azure uh, Service Bus, or it could be something like RabbitMQ, Kafka, and many more. So let's say here, I want to create a new job or a new pod each time I have a new message, for example, in order to process that message. So for that here, Keda will act on my deployments, on the number of replica for the pods or for the container app or for the jobs. And typically within an AKS cluster, we have the HPA, the horizontal pod autoscaler. So CADA first will go to configure the HPA. Remember the HPA is the horizontal pod autoscaler and it is the component in Kubernetes that decides about the number of replica for my pods. So using the HPA to be able to say here, I want to scale between one pod to N pods. And if you want to deactivate the pods, if we, would, we, would, we don't need any pod to be running here, then we can set that number to be zero. And we don't, cannot do that with HPA, with horizontal pod autoscaler, at least not today. So for that, what KEDA can do is that it can act on another component of my cluster, which is the deployment. So with the deployment, it will go to set that deployment to zero. So it will, can tell it to, to create just one replica or to create zero replica or vice versa, zero to one. So this will enable me to have a not just one to one, uh, one to N containers, I can have zero to N containers running in my Kubernetes cluster. So if I can configure these two components, then these two components actually will go then last to um, change the number of replica of my uh, pods or uh, deployments or container apps. At the end, it's gonna be either a pod or a container. So that will change the number of replica for those workloads. So KEDA will connect to the external system to get the data here or to get some uh, metrics and then we'll use it in order to to scale my containers so it will actually go to configure the scaling rules for my containers so as a scaling rule here we might have one example so let's add that here as a scaling rule let's say for example uh, one if i have one message waiting in the queue that will trigger running one container or one pod and they can also say if i have five messages, then they will be processed by one single container. So they will trigger only one container instead of five containers. So a scaling rule would be, for example, five messages in the queue will trigger, will trigger a job or a pod at the end that triggers containers. So for this uh, CADA component to be able 
to connect to those external systems like the Azure Service Bus, for example, then it will need to authenticate and to authorize. So for that here, it will perform that operation. And this actually depends on the configuration for CADA. So CADA uh, have multiple components, actually. One of them is the scalers. So for each external system, for Azure Service Bus, for example, we have a specific scaler that can be used in order to authenticate to Azure Service Bus. And the authentication depends on that scaler. So for Service Bus, for example, that authentication could be done either using a Service Bus connection string, and this data here will be saved into the scale rule. And that authentication could also be done using a service principle, an SPN. Another option that uh, could be used is the managed identity, which is the preferred way. So for this option, for using the managed identity, it works for KEDA with Kubernetes, with AKS, because managed identity could be only used within the Azure cloud. But for Azure container apps, this option doesn't work until today. It's not actually uh, implemented. However, in the future, it might be uh, supported. So keep watching on that. Now, after KEDA have connected to those external systems, it gets the data, the number of the messages, then it will go to trigger the scaling of those workloads. Once these workloads starts running here, typically what I want to do is that maybe I have an application in here, and that application, because it was triggered by a message from the queue, it will go to process that message. So that my application here needs to go to connect to that queue. So here it will perform a connect operation and it will go to receive the message from the queue. For this workload to be able to connect to that, uh, to that queue again, it will go to perform an authentication operation. And this authentication here is totally independent from the authentication of KEDA. But it, still used, it, st uh, it will still be able to connect the same authentication options available with here. So it could use either a managed identity or connection string or an SPN, but it can also use an, some other authentication options uh, because here we are talking about a container. And for a developer, he wants to test that container locally in his developer machine before deploying that container to the Kubernetes cluster or to container apps. So he wants to make sure that when testing locally, that this container could connect to that service bus queue in order to be able to debug it and to make sure it works as expected. So once that container or that application is running on his own machine, he needs to perform an authentication. And when he's on his machine, he cannot use managed identity because his machine is not an Azure virtual machine. And maybe we, we don't want to use a connection string or a service principle because those contains uh, passwords and credentials and we don't want to save those credentials onto the developer machine. So what we can use here is some other options like using the Azure CLI so that user will have the right access role on the queue to perform the receive messages. Or this also works with the AZD, which is the Azure Developer uh, CLI tool. And the authentication locally could also work within a browser. So all of these will be enabled by an object that is called the Azure Credentials, which is an object either in .NET or Python, and you can configure it to use the right authentication method so that your application could connect. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.